Hi guys! Have you ever wondered what the ultimate smart telescope would look like? Well, it's finally here! The Vera C. Rubin Observatory just came online and since I'm an avid astrophotographer I thought it would be a lot of fun to compare the latest giant telescope that sits on a mountaintop in Chile to the more modest astrophotography telescopes we use in our backyards and balconies to image the night sky. So in this video I'm going to talk about the incredible level of detail and speed with which this telescope is capturing the night sky as compared to our average backyard astrophotography setups. I'm Wido Oeglemans and you are watching or listening to Wido's Astroforum. So the Vera C. Rubin Observatory is a US-led project funded by the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy. Construction began around 2011 and after more than a decade of building and testing, it captured its first light in April 2025 and it just released its first images this week on June 23rd. From Concept to first light, it took nearly 24 years to bring Rubin to life. So how does Rubin compare to a typical backyard telescope? Well, let's start with the aperture. That's the size of the mirror that collects light. Rubin's primary mirror is huge, it's 8.4 meters wide. That's about 8400 millimeters or about 331 inches if you are in the United States. Most of us use much smaller telescopes. Amateur scopes usually have apertures between 50 and 350 millimeters, so that's around 2 to 14 inches if you are in the US. A pretty average size would be 200 millimeters or 8 inches, so let's use that as a reference. Now, to compare resolution, we can use a measure called Dahl's limit. Dahl's limit tells us how close two stars can appear together in the night sky but can still be detected as two separate points of light by your telescope. With its massive aperture, Rubin has a theoretical resolution of 0.014 arc seconds. And an arc second is like a very tiny piece of the night sky, it's 1 36th of a degree of the night sky. If we compare that to a typical 8-inch telescope, the limit of that amateur telescope would be around 0.57 arc seconds. So that means that in theory, the Vera Rubin Observatory would be able to resolve details that are about 40 times finer than what we can typically resolve with an amateur telescope. But there is also a very huge catch, and that catch is that we are not imaging under ideal conditions in space where there's no atmosphere, but the Vera Rubin Observatory is right here on Earth and therefore its resolution is limited by the atmosphere. So things like turbulence in the air, wind speed and other factors we call astronomical seeing conditions, they usually blur the view to somewhere between 0.5 and 2 arc seconds depending on your location and the weather. Now. Of course, Rubin is situated on a high mountaintop in Chile, where the average astronomical scene conditions are great, but still they are about 0.5 to 0.6 arc seconds on average. So that will be the practical limit of the Vera Rubin Observatory. So let's also talk about the focal ratio, which is related to the speed with which the telescope captures light from deep space. And the Vera Rubin Observatory is a true speed demon. It operates at an absolutely insane f1.23 focal ratio. Now, get this, most consumer telescopes fall somewhere in between f2 uh, that would be an ultra-fast telescope like the Celestron Rasa and F10 or even F12 for slower designs like the schmidt cassegrain telescope or Maxitov telescopes. So let's take an average value of say F5. Now if you own a telescope you might know that light gathering speed scales with the square of the F ratio. So when we compare an F5 telescope to Rubin's F1.23 focal ratio, Rubin will be about 16 times faster. So what does it actually mean? Well, 
Ruben is designed to take two 15 second exposures per image. So that takes two 15 second photos of the night sky before moving on to another part of the night sky. We will come back to that in a second. Now, get this. Because an F5 telescope is 16 times slower, it would take that telescope about 240 seconds or about four minutes to collect the same amount of light Rubin does in just 15 seconds. How awesome is that? And if we assume that Rubin stacks two of those 15 second shots into an overall 30 second stacked image, your F5 setup would actually need eight full minutes to match that amount of light captured by uh, the Vera Rubin Observatory in just 30 seconds. At this speed, the Vera Rubin Observatory can capture the full night sky above Chile every three nights. That's insane. Now, let's also talk about the field of view and the image scale. First, the field of view. Rubin has an enormous 3200 megapixel camera and with that camera, it captures 9.6 square degrees of sky in a single 15 second photo. <laughs> That's huge. For context, the full moon is about half a degree wide, so 0.5 degrees in size. So Rubin's field of view of the night sky is similar to fitting around 40 full moons into one single image. Let's assume that we are using an F5 ratio telescope with a three square degree view of the night sky, then that particular setup would need 12 minutes to match that 15 second photo taken by the Vera Rubin Observatory to match that photo both in brightness as well as the amount of sky captured. That's incredible. Now let's also talk about image scale. That's how much sky each pixel of your camera covers. It's measured in arc seconds, which are these tiny slices of the night sky. I told you before that there are 3,600 arc seconds in a single degree of the night sky, right? So Rubin's image scale is 0.2 arc seconds per pixel. So it deliberately oversamples the atmospheric seeing in Chile, which averages around 0.6 arc seconds. This is intentional because oversampling allows for more precise measurements of galaxy shapes, star positions, and brightness changes. And this technique is known as Nyquist oversampling in astrophotography. So in amateur astrophotography, 0.2 arc seconds per pixel isn't unusual, but it is mostly used for planetary imaging where we capture short exposure videos and stack the best frames to beat the atmospheric seeing conditions. For deep sky astrophotography, most amateurs use image scales between 0.5 and 2 arc seconds per pixel, depending on their local seeing conditions. Rubin uses different filters to capture the night sky with its massive mono CCD camera. In particular, it uses a set of six special filters that cover light from the ultraviolet to the near infrared range. And these filters are called Sloan filters and they are labeled U, G, R, I, Z and Y. So the U filter specifically detects ultraviolet light and that's great for spotting hot young stars and active star forming regions. The G, the green blue filters covers blue green light. And this is perfect for seeing structures in spiral galaxies. You have an R filter, the red filter that shows us cooler stars and older galaxies. And the I, Z and Y filters, they look into the near infrared and the near infrared red helps Rubin to see through dust and find distant objects like faint red dwarfs, distant quasars, and so on. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory is like the ultimate smart telescope dream. Every night it uses a real-time scheduler to choose which part of the night sky to image based on weather conditions and science goals. It takes these two 15 second exposures per object and then rapidly and automatically slews to the next one. Each image is automatically calibrated and corrected for biased dark and flat frames. And then it is played soft and aligned with known star positions. Hundreds of these exposures are then stacked to create deep, detailed views both nightly and over time. 
Rubin also compares every new image to previous ones, automatically detecting changes like supernovae, asteroids and variable stars. If something new appears, it sends out an alert within 60 seconds. In just 10 hours of test observations, Rubin already discovered 2,104 previously unseen asteroids, including seven near-Earth objects. While amateur smart telescopes image tiny patches of the night sky, Rubin scans nearly the entire sky once every three nights. And all of this generates a huge amount of data. Ruben collects about 60 terabytes of data every single night. As a comparison, when I photograph an object with my APS-C size camera, I might end up with 25 to 50 gigabytes during one night. That's over a thousand times difference in data. Ruben's 10-year mission is part of the Legacy Survey of Space and Time and its main goal is to map the dynamic night sky in unprecedented detail. It aims to detect and catalog billions of galaxies to help us understand dark energy and the accelerating expansion of the universe. It also measures uh, the shapes and distribution of galaxies to study the effects of dark matter. It will track millions of asteroids, comets and near-Earth objects and observe supernovae and other short-lived cosmic events in real time and it will also create the most complete 3d map of the universe ever made if that's not ambitious i don't know what is Anyway, all of this is massively exciting and i'll be keeping an eye out on Rubin's discoveries in the months and years to come well that's all i got i'm Vido Ullemans clear skies <laughs>